we really ought to talk about the furs, uh, how that happened, because it seems like uh, it. We we need to put that that story to rest. The furs on Marty Robbins' record, or don't worry, seems to uh, concern a lot of people in how it happened. And the Jordanaires, we were in all interviewed one time. The A team of musicians and the Jordanaires and. Uh, Ray Walker's version and Gordon Stoker's was that uh, Grady Martin created. Uh, he took a tube and put it in his pocket and said, that's it, you know, took it out of his amp. And uh, that wasn't it. And I said, I really hate to disagree with you. You're my brother, but I hate to disagree with you, but it didn't happen that way. I said, uh, let me ask you this. If he did that, why didn't he do it at RCA? Because he couldn't. It didn't happen that way. Uh, I, I saw after the fuzz, I saw Hank Garland uh, at RCA try to create the fuzz by hooking two amps together and taking a tube out of one of them. <laughs> it wasn't the same as this one. So going on with the story, uh, I'm going to let Glenn talk about the other part of it, but I, I, part I want to talk about is uh, Owen and, well, you and Owen, maybe you, you need to dive in there. Uh, you and Owen went to New York, and you put us in debt thirty-five thousand dollars to buy a mixing board, and you guys yeah. didn't even ask me. <laughs> you didn't ask me at all. And coming back on the airplane, you drew it out the control room and drew, did all of that stuff. Yeah, I'm true. I'm quoting you out of a magazine article, you know, th yeah. from years back. But uh, <clears throat> so we went in debt for this, and we probably never paid that until we sold the studio, which is fine. But uh, Owen, as you know, always wanted the newest equipment. So you guys went and told them how you want it built, I guess, right? Well, they already, the they already had that type of console. They had that one, and so yeah. we bought it, right? Yeah. Um, they had one, I think, that they had uh, moved from one studio to another, and uh, that one was available. Mm -hmm. and I, I happened to sit in on a session with the McGuire sisters, so I knew the console worked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then uh, when we got here, the console arrived, <coughs> and uh, uh, the, the complete story on this is really kind of complicated, but I'll try to shorten it up. The amplifiers in that console were <clears throat> made by a company called Langevin, and uh, the Langevin was going to move from New York to California. And so they farmed out 50 sets of coils, transformers, that went in those, to those uh, amplifiers. And uh, as it turns out, when we got the console, those amplifiers started going out one at a time. I think we have wound up with 30 of them out of the 50 that they uh, farmed out. And uh, <clears throat> one of them happened to have Gray's uh, amplifier, uh, rather his guitar plugged into um, that particular channel when the when it went out the amplifier just uh, kind of died because the output transformer had opened up and uh, I, I can just see a spark inside that transformer happening every time Grady would uh, hit a string so that's what happened, and that's the first tone came out of that amplifier. And then later on, uh, the amplifier just quit. We, we didn't have fuzz at that point. So uh, I went to her, I said, well, we're, we're gonna have to do something about that. So I got busy and we built something that looks like this. Uh, called a fuzz tone, had two amp two knobs on it, and it worked. So uh, 
uh, I went to New York, I went to Chicago rather, and sold the idea to uh, Gibson. And uh, they produced uh, the uh, first tone, and I understand so quite a few of them.